This is the Fifth Estate Winning Headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this year. Today is the 26th of December 2019 and I am DM. I am JM. And I am GK. Happy Boxing Day, everybody. Mm. What is Boxing Day? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Boxing Day originated in the United Kingdom and countries that were part of the empire are still celebrating it. Mm. But basically, it was the day the mass gave mm. a box, a Christmas box, to their servants. Oh. And so on the 26th, you would take it home to your families and open it if you're a servant. Mm. So so you're actually not unboxing on Christmas mm. Day because you're working. working. Yes. So yeah. they well, go the we, day after. Where are we celebrating that here? Can you oh. imagine? Well, oh. thank God for the BBI. For the BBI. Yes, One yes, of the yes, best yes. recommendations. We'll have it as Cultural Day. Indeed. Yes. Will be. Yes. So let's look at um, uh, the year in review. Mm. We mm. are now in October to December. Yep. Mm. And um, one of the main things that happened in October, actually, mm. we should start with, it started in September but yeah. went into October, yeah. was the demonetization. Yes, actually started in June when the president announced that yes. there's going to be a demonetization. And at that time, yeah. he said that it was uh, against the fight yeah. or, or it was for the fight against corruption. That yes. is why they were, they were doing it. So then it was executed from that point until the 30th of September. Everybody remembers that uh, deadline. Yes. Mm -hmm. You and must then exchange there, your 1,000 shillings. shillings yeah. for, yes. And then it is in October. October was the month of truth because that's when we knew what, mm. had, um, what the results were. Mm. Yes. So people predicted chaos, actually, when the president announced that. Mm. At least economic uh, chaos. They thought it's going to be so disorganized. We're going to be like Zimbabwe with the long lines from the ATMs yeah. and, and, the, yeah. and the banks. Yeah. But also, people interpreted the president's announcement yeah. as not a fight just against corruption, but against uh, the deputy president, William Ruto, yeah. and mm. his business associates. And also mm. all the harambes that he was going for, for and giving and, uh, 10 million giving bucks, big bucks um, in, in, in churches. Yeah. As far as the process itself, it was very successful. Yeah, and very I, smooth. I think kudos it's to the central bank government. Kudos. Yes. I think it's because we have an opus day. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The people of the order are very meticulous. Yes. Very meticulous. Yes. I've lived with opus day. Mm -hmm. I lived with opus day in Ireland yeah. for a bit. And I tell you, there's some of the most meticulous people, people. in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. Remarkable. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the exercise was uh, flawless. Yeah. But in terms of meeting the intention of fighting corruption, we well, don't know. <laughs> mm. uh, Jorge announced that out of the 217 billion that was in circulation in terms of the 1,000 shilling notes, mm. 7.4 billion did not come, come back. back. So that yeah. is what is out there. So it's hard to believe that only 7.4 billion is the proceeds of corruption in yeah. Kenya. Yeah. Of course, people deal with foreign currencies. Of course, they also tie up the proceeds in uh, assets. Exactly. So, yeah. exactly. Mm. To that extent, it wasn't we, yeah. successful. Yeah. 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 And also that number is also negligible when you divide it perhaps by the number by of people, the number in, of people Kenya. in the country that yeah. comes to I don't know, 200 bob. It's the stuff yeah. you left in your jeans in and your old yeah. jacket and <laughs> laundry. Yes. Okay, great. And then next, uh, a man named Eliud Kipchoge oh. in October. Oh, yeah. What a guy. Yes. So October 12th <coughs> in Vienna, Austria, in the Ineos Challenge, he ran a marathon in under two hours. The mm. only man to have mm. done so. Mm. He did it in one hour, 59 minutes and 40 seconds. Mm. And Kenyans and the world over extremely proud and the coverage was amazing oh, yeah. so you had top of the world yeah. it was very captivating yes. very lovely for yeah. Kenyans and he has since racked up more awards yeah. mm. so just recently he was award, um, he was named BBC sports personality of the year mm. 2019 mm. and he's the first Kenyan to do so mm. and then he was also he retained his world athletics title so he's the athlete of the year again in 2019 mm. and he also not has the first Kenyan no, oh, no there he is. <laughs> I think that we've been okay. Yeah. And then he has two honorary doctorate degrees that he was awarded in mm. science and law. Mm. One from the University of Laikipia in Kenya and one from the University of Exeter in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. It so reminds me of a Bible verse. Yes. A man's gift maketh room for him in the world. Oh, oh of course. Beautiful. And, and he will stand before kings. And, and he, he will stand before, before yeah. kings. Yeah. Oh, well done. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. So, wow. <laughs> hey. Reverend As Jeremy. Associate. Yes. <laughs> associate. 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 Yeah, so he made us extremely proud. Yeah. And the other thing I think we can come to mm -hmm. is uh, Sonko's arrest or BBI. Let's do BBI first. Yeah, yeah. so in uh, late November, yes, yes. the BBI report was finally released. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of speculation before it was released. Mount mm -hmm. Kenya MPs came out saying that uh, we better not see a parliamentary system of government because we need 
proportional representation. Exactly. And so what we ended up seeing with the recommendations are, you know, fairly, I think, um, acceptable uh, recommendations to everybody. Yeah. They yeah. suggested the position. It was very tame, very, very mild. Tame, yeah. Precisely. Compared yeah. to the anticipation. Yeah. 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 And all the, the discussion that ha had been had regarding yeah, yeah. some of the drastic changes that must be had yeah. um, to our executive. Uh, but and what we said here mm. at the Fifth Estate mm. is that uh, surely that document must be a decoy, <laughs> right? And uh, it's turning out to be, uh, as we know now, the BBI's mm, yeah. uh, uh, task force's term has been extended to go and collect further views. Um, and just last week, uh, ODM came out and made its views and, known. And, and made its views known that mm. we want an executive prime minister, two deputy prime ministers, yep. and even uh, hinting at a parliamentary system of government, yeah. and so on and so forth. Um, so that is likely what we are going to be uh, dis discussing early next year. Of course, yeah, so BBI yeah. will still remain in the headlines, in the headlines for a long time. So coming. we wait for part two. Part, part two, the real, the real <laughs> BBI, the real BBI. Hopefully yeah, the real yeah, BBI yeah, emerges. Yeah. Um, and then later we went to a man who mysteriously fell from London skies. So he had fallen in June or July mm. in the year, but then uh, Kenyan media sort of picked it up, dropped it, and then Sky News reporter comes out and does mm. this big story, yeah. this huge connection of who the person may have been mm. and how it might have been a cover-up by KA mm. and the cleaning company of which he worked for. Mm. Um, it has since emerged. It had so much intrigue. So it was a Kenyan who fell from London skies. Mm. There was a stowaway saga taking a new turn of identity, whereas the Sky reporter said that it was one mm. person. That person came out and said, actually, I'm alive, I'm, alive. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. The parents came out and said, we've been lying about it. We took money. We didn't want to um, make the Muzungu presenter mm. or journalist mm. upset. Mm. So we told them what he wanted to hear. <laughs> and since then, I think we still don't know who yes, John Doe is. Really. Yes, and so his body is still in the UK. Yeah. Ken Kenyans have a very, just before you go, have mm. a very terrible culture of not being able to say no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You know, they can't just... If you don't know, just... Yeah, yeah just yeah. like saying... Especially oh, when it comes to wazungus. authority, and yes. then now they attach authority <laughs> to wazungus. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. To white it, and there was no reason why the Sky reporter should have, you know, gotten yeah. away with such a thing. No. And I think he got called out in the, in the media for but using... All just a slap yeah, on the wrist. Yeah. Circumstantial ed evidence to try and create this whole mm -hmm. scenario. Yeah. So then, perhaps the latest and most intriguing thing as we closed out the year was... Sonko's arrest. Dramatic. Yes, very dramatic <laughs> arrest. arrest. <coughs> Once again, yeah. uh, late November, yeah. uh, DPP comes out on a Friday and says, I want Sonko arrested. And, uh, you know, he was then uh, trailed, <laughs> uh, arrested in a very dramatic fashion yes. somewhere in Voy. There was a helicopter chase. Yeah, there was a highway chase. A bite. Absolutely. Yeah, there someone was, got uh, It was a bite. We don't know how that confrontation really came about. Yeah. Uh, but he was anyway put in a chopper, mm -hmm. transported to Nairobi, then he mm -hmm. went to sell. Yeah. And ever since he's retreated and is now licking his wounds. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere, maybe in Yaria State yeah. or wherever. Yeah. Else. yeah. And it turns out he failed to show up in the Voy court for the assault charges mm. on, um, last Wednesday or mm. the Wednesday before. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Right. Mm. Yeah. I think the first mistake is he made was resisting arrest in the first place. Yeah. I mean, what was he going to do? The police had yeah. surrounded him, but yeah. he resisted, which yeah. of course makes it hard for you, for him, when he went to court because he was then deemed a flight risk. Yes. Mm. And, and not forgetting yeah. that he had escaped from prison 17 years ago. And so mm. Shimolata might, might want their prisoner back. <laughs> to <laughs> complete his sentence. Something curious, by the way. Yes. Did you know that uh, Sonko has a death certificate? Yes, I saw that this circulating was in that, the media. Is that true? I don't know, but I did see a picture it was really of it strange. circulating. Yeah. Maybe one of his aliases died, guys. <laughs> one of his aliases. Crazy. Or it could be yeah. fake news. Like There's just so much drama around, around him, him that he's just a very fertile yeah. ground for all sorts of yeah. allegations. Yeah. And so Nairobi's fate currently still hangs yes, in the balance. That's right. We still don't know what the way forward yeah. is to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that sure will be continuing news for sure. Yes. Yes. So between all those stories, what would you suggest should be our winning coverage? No brainer, Kipchoge. Kipchoge, one point five nine. Thank you for yeah. the positivity and inspiration that he has brought. And he said, you know, no human is limited. No human no is limited. limited. I yeah. think um, the media must definitely be commended yeah. for the way that they covered the story, for yeah. the length that they covered the story. Yeah. It was very inspirational, and once again, it's one of those stories that really brought the country together. It was there very you go. hopeful. Yeah. There you go, Kipchoge mm. gives us our winning coverage for this. Yeah. So, what is our final thought? 
Our final thought is inspired by a book called Freakonomics, written in 2006 by Stephen Levitt and Stephen Dubner. Mm. It's called A Rogue Economist Explores the Hidden Side of Everything. Mm. So it promises mm. a lot of mystery. It does. <laughs> so this book is actually not about economics, but it's a, rather a book that applies economic principles mm. or economic theories mm. to other subjects. And its aim is to turn conventional wisdom on its head. So Levitt and Dubner argue that morality represents the way the world should be, but economics represents yeah. the way the world actually Works. is. Yeah. So one of the things that they talk about in the book is incentives, and they say that incentives dominate our lives. They actually motivate us or encourage us to do or not do something. Mm. So, and they say that Incentives explain a lot about human behavior. Mm. For example, in the book, they explore a lot of stories about how incentives cause people who ideally should not be cheating to, to cheat, cheat a lot, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. teachers in the American school system, yeah. Yeah. or sumo wrestlers who are very revered in the Japanese uh, culture. culture yeah. The other thing that they talk about, which is very interesting, is correlation and causation. And mm. I think this is the most uh, famous subject in their book. Mm. They say correlation is the association, is when there's a strong association between two variables, yeah. right? Yeah. But then causation indicates that one event is Causes. caused as a direct result yes. of the occurrence of another event. Yeah. 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 For instance, um, in the 1950s yeah. in America, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Some doctors and parents noticed that polio, yeah. the occurrence of polio, is higher in the summer. <laughs> Why mm. is this? <laughs> so the, the, the correlation that they made yeah. was that ice cream, there's a lot of, children eat a lot of ice cream in, in the, the summer. Because it's hot. So yeah. ice cream must cause polio. <laughs> that was the... That's so a correlation. Mm. So it's, it's supposed to be a correlation, yeah. but they made it a causation. Okay. Mm. To the extent that doctors recommended that kids should not eat ice cream. Huh, because how sad. they'll so contract polio. <laughs> they will contract oh, polio. Goodness. So ice cream became very unpopular <laughs> <laughs> because of uh, people not being able yeah. to yeah. discern the difference yeah. between correlation, that two variables can yeah. actually exist at the same time and have nothing, to, time, do but have nothing to do with each other. Interesting. Yeah. That is mm. very interesting. Mm. So in chapter two, he talks about information asymmetry. Yeah. So the idea that there's an unequal access to information with any kind of given transaction. Mm, yeah. And he says a lot of people go through life yeah. with this fear. Yeah. So, and because they have this fear, they rely on experts to guide them through life. Yeah. Mm. And so, for instance, he says, um, you would go to your doctor. Yes. And even if you had a nagging suspicion that maybe he's doing something wrong, you, wouldn't you would call trust him, him anyway because yeah. he has more information. Yeah. Yeah. He spent more time in medical school yeah. and all that. Yeah. more patients. Yeah. Yes. However, he says that what has been equalizing is something called the internet. So he gives an example. He says the internet changed things. He says mm. information is the currency of the internet. Mm. And it has also vastly shrunk the gap between experts and the people who don't have that information. Yeah. Yeah. So he gives a case study. He says late in the 1990s, the price, the price of term life insurance mm. just went really low. Mm. And it fell dramatically because of the advent of the internet. Mm. Mm. So before it was very hard for someone to compare life insurance packages. Yeah. So it was very convoluted, it was time consuming, mm. so you usually just went with the one that you got. Yeah. But with the advent of information, there was a website, one of the first websites to do it was quotesmith.com in 1996 and basically they put different prices you couldn't actually buy anything on the website but mm -hmm. you could just see what the different yeah. life insurance plans costed mm -hmm. and this meant that people were actually making better decisions, decisions. Yeah. Yeah. so in a span of a year people spent the american customers mm -hmm. spent a billion less dollars wow. in uh, mm. life term mm. insurance. And all this because is all of because information. Of the yeah. Yeah. Information. So the, uh, Google and what we see yeah. now, that yeah. someone tells you something, you quickly go yeah. and you can you compare. Fact check it. Yeah. Mm. And then the other example he gave was an old one from the Ku Klux Klan. Mm -hmm. So the Ku Klux Klan mm. uh, formed just uh, post-American Civil War. Um, they used to use fear and terror 
to 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 the <laughs> to yeah. intimidate yeah. especially people who had just been emancip- emancipated as yeah. slaves mm. but they also targeted the catholics the jews, jews the mm. communists yeah basically the sympathizers yeah. of black people so this guy called mm. stetson mm. and i think most kenyans will know stetson if you love country cowboy mm. hats yeah. Yeah. so he's from yeah. that same family ah. stetson set about trying to dispel the fear that the ku klux klan had over mm. Americans mm. and he did this by increasing the information that the American public had about the clan mm. so the clan thrived on secret mm. yeah, mystery yes. and mystery, mystery yeah. and all these things that's why they cloaked themselves yes. yeah. but then when he uncovered what they actually did because he would infiltrate these because he was white and yeah. he w- seemed like them and he would infiltrate their meetings and they were very kind of normal <laughs> yeah. you know there was the roving committee the guys who made the white clothes <laughs> And so he would take this information and he would publicize their, their meetings and, and say what had happened. And what it did was the American public stopped fearing them as much. Yeah. Mm. And it sort of dispelled this kind of, and they became al- 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 almost like a mockery. Yeah. Like well, all absolutely. they do is sit and discuss how they're going to go and burn yeah. 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 things. And the other thing that he discovered was that the amount of lynchings over time mm-hmm had actually decreased. Mm. So it was more a fear like how terrorism is. There's mm. less terrorist events, but they're very scary. So it's the anticipation of mm. lynchings, mm. when in fact more people yes. were dying from yes. other diseases yes. than actual lynchings from the clan. Mm. Yeah. So information yeah. in that way was used, it, uh, being given to the public was used mm. as a, a way to kill yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a remarkable story. That yes. that song should be made an American saint. It should. It should. <laughs> yeah. it should. And what also, people, and, and, and the other thing he says is that with experts, there's always that incentive. It could be financial. Yeah. yeah. So with doctors, they might recommend a more expensive procedure. Yeah. Because yes. you just and don't know better. And that happens in this country. And it happens yeah. a lot. A lot. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. they may have collaborations with pharmaceutical companies. Exactly. So they're giving you medicine promote, that you don't yeah. really Absolutely. need, but because they exactly. have a quota to fulfill. Exactly. Yeah. So even as you go through life, any transaction you're doing, you mm. need to think about what do they know that I don't mm. and how can I reduce the information like asymmetry mm. um, between mm. the two of you, mm. 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 make your life easier. Absolutely. I think we're actually living in a, f- in a, in a very good time yeah. as, as, as consumers yeah. Yeah. Yes. because we that information gap has really reduced. We yeah. have options. Yeah. We can go fact check things. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, yeah. And that will give us a better quality of life. Definitely. The other thing he talks about is risk. Yes. And he says that human beings sometimes have a very disproportionate uh, view towards risk, yeah. right? Um, and and you know, so he says, for example, we're quite irrational when doing risk assessment when it comes to um, things like plane crashes, yeah. gun crime, yeah. terror attacks, as yeah. you just mentioned, yeah. right? Um, the excessive coverage that they get in the media, mm. the dramatic manner in which some of these events unfold, mm. will lead us to think that uh, the probability of that happening to us yeah. very high. very high. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, um, you know, some of the some of these uh, uh, risks. Risks are not as 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 high, you know, as, high mm. as as um, some of the uh, risks that we face on an everyday yeah. basis. They say mm. you're more likely to die from a drunken driver than a terrorist attack. Precisely, mm. yeah. right? Yeah. Or a plane yeah. crash. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> so, and he gives an example. As a parent, would you feel safer if your child was playing at a friend's house where there's a gun kept, uh, or playing at a house with a swimming pool? Now. Uh, both. Both. <laughs> Gun. Gun. Yeah. Yeah. So I, obviously, the bigger risk here um, is a swimming pool. Oh, actually, yeah. right? okay. the the child is 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 more likely to. Uh, come to harm's way mm-hmm. in a house with a pool than in a house with a gun. Yeah, um, that's because the gun has to be in the hands of an irrational person yeah. to shoot a child. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. or not well kept, or not, or not well, well kept, kept. Yeah. and so the the chance of that happening is much lower than yeah. to- the child toddling into the pool. Yeah. Precisely, yeah. precisely. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So that's uh, one event, um, and 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 basically what we what we uh, what he's telling us here mm-hmm. is is to evaluate risk in a in a more sober manner, uh, to really calculate the odds. Yeah, don't be so over rational. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, do, I think don't rely. Asking too much. No, don't rely. <laughs> don't rely so much on, on on what's happening in the media. Yeah. Uh, do do some do some calculation before you go there. The, I think they're asking for too much because remember uh-huh. the book that I've referred to all week. Yes. yes. Uh, Twenty one lessons for the twenty first century. Yeah. And they said that human beings we are engineered to process stories. Mm. We don't process. Facts. Numbers yeah. or facts or things like that. Yeah. So as a human being on a plane, yeah. I'm not going to say 
the last plane crash at Okar is this, this, this. Therefore, the probability of this plane yeah. coming down. But you do I remember just, a new story. I and you remember a new story. Right, yeah, the, the latest new died. story yeah. in people's yeah. eyes. So I think this is oh. just uh, being human, yes. yes. isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah. It's being human. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> but 2020 is the year to take risks, Kenyans. Take risks. <laughs> there you have Take risks. There you have heard mm. it from JL. Um, I hope you have a happy Boxing Day. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and find us on TV. We are on GoTV, Pankfeet Air and Star Times. Have a good evening.